December 8th. Um, I want to go over the charts here and just give you an idea of where we're at. Um, now I'm going to be doing another video. It's going to take me more time um, because I want it to be very clear on how I balance from long accounts to short accounts and how I move between the two different accounts and uh, you know my orders and so forth. Because you can see I have a lot of uh, entries and exits and uh, a lot of trading is going on now that we've went to and under the the main value point in Bitcoin at that 70, low 7200 and under level. Um, we broke under there. This is very important because this is a long-term buy line, okay? And uh, this is from historic, from historically from other markets, the cycling of price. It had to go to this price and under in order for it to make new highs. Until it did that, the statistics of it making new highs in, in the next few years were shot. They were unlikely. And this has to do with markets that go back hundreds of years. I, I've studied charts forever. And I went through the statistics of what characteristics each of those charts do. And I spent countless hours and days and you know, I've spent years. Who am I kidding? Um, you know, I've done this for over 30 something years. It's freaky uh, to think about. But, um, you know, I've studied these charts and this is now fulfilled the major aspect of a market that can make a new all time high and higher highs. Uh, which we would expect for Bitcoin by it going under that 7200 range. And it's fulfilled its ability. Now the dissipation of sellers from this point, the the wide uh, herd, the, you know, the psychology of it, and they might not be aware of it, but statistically this becomes relevant and it adds a preponderance to a larger move that, that exponentially increases our odds of making new highs well beyond the 20k or whatever we went up to and um, that's very important so the chart is cycled through and it is now a buy at or under this level that's why I've flipped and that's why you saw you know uh, instead of being a short I've now become mostly a long and that's the major reason why for that and again I'll have a, a video on how I balance back and forth and I'm just trading and I'm trading this range that you see right here we have a pattern. I'm going to focus you on this right here. And it is a butterfly-like pattern in M. You can call it whatever you want, a crab. They've got all kinds of really cool names for them. But I don't really care. I just noticed the geometry. Uh, you know, you can name it. I, they come with some really interesting ones, shark patterns. And, you know, I, I've noticed the geometry. Now, one of the funny things is that people don't look at the other variables associated with these patterns to give them any really statistical relevance, but I do. And volume and um, it's uh, tempo and, uh, you know, like almost like music. It's uh, There's all kinds of elements that you don't see necessarily uh, visually in the chart, but they're there. And uh, mathematically, they're going off and people aren't aware of them. But uh, that's what I focus on, to add relevance to how the percentage of likelihood of these patterns completing to the upside or downside. Well, this one right here has a good statistical value. And we're not completely out of the woods. We can still make a move down and maybe even new lows down to the, between I'd say, right here. Let me draw that. Around this 6,200 to 50, just around 5,800 let's say right there. This area down here is still possible. And what I would look for to have happen outside of this right here, this is give it a strong, given it a strong base. Uh, that's not to say that we will go down to here and break down here. This could be the strong base before we get a pump all the way up to the um, mid to high uh, 9,000 range. Uh, this could be a good enough of a base and we're probably you know showing here I, I'm seeing the accumulation that I stated uh, you know the, the numbers are there the bigger money's there they're not able to really buy they have to spike prices all the way up to get all their fills because there's nobody really selling there's you know most of the guys that got out of the market or whatever have they're gone 
Uh, there's no impetus for them to sell. So now you're getting any buying causing bigger moves upward. And the balance of power is going to the, the long side, which makes sense because it's right off of this level. And this is the first hit of this level. And we've not really tested these lows down here. Um, so that's open still. Uh, it does have a little bit of a negative bias, but not, not very much because what you know I told you about the longer term. Uh, so right now, between this blue line and that red line, uh, this is going to be an area of interest and whatnot. And I could see us making a move up. Now, there's a few things that we could do here. And I'm going to draw a pattern. This one has a high uh, statistical probability of occurring. And let's draw this red because that's what it is. It is a negative pattern. And boom, all right. Now we can't determine, because there's a bunch of other elements here, we can't determine if it's going to go to here and then down. This is what we could be looking for. Or if this extends upwards, it could extend all the way up to that, what I told you before, that 8200 number because of what's here. But unfortunately, this inverted head and shoulders is uh, truncated. So that throws a, a curve into the numbers, and it becomes very loose. Um, so statistically, things become a little bit more discombobulated, and uh, your variation that you get on there becomes much higher. So I, I'm not really, uh, how, I'm not committed to any one thing occurring as far as short-term prices go other than uh, it has a higher upside you know, possibility because of the, the larger pattern. So we, we will focus with the volume dynamics and what I see in here to the larger pattern uh, from this level down here. So what do I expect from this right here? This is a possibility where we can get all the way down to here, maybe even the 5800 level, you know, and Maybe there will be some news or something. It will probably have to be very news driven for that to occur. Uh, or, you know, that's the negative scenario. The positive scenario is we, this, we triangulated right here. We bottomed out right there, retraced here, and then we just break a trend line. And we'll see the effects of this. Because, again, you know, we don't go over and try to predict what the price is going to do. We watch and say, well, this is what happens most often. Uh, we observe. So I'm in observation mode right here. And I've already executed my plan from before. So I need to make some new plans. You know, and I, I've made the longer term plans right here. Short term plans are in observation mode. So I've not really got a short term plan uh, to, to execute. Everything is more of the long, um, the longer term plans. Uh, so right here, we're looking at this trend line. If we break above here, we'll probably get a sharp move upwards to these highs and higher. And we'll find if there's resistance here and see if we get a spike down. That's possible. But the positive side that I was going to say is that we can just go straight up. Let's do our little line. Boom. And let's put a little arrow on it, make it cute. And there you go. Uh, this is the other possibility. And you know, Bitcoin is very strange in the you know in the way it moves. So we're going to open our minds to that scenario as being possible. Uh, you know, the the mid uh, to upper nine thousand range, uh, where things become interesting. Uh, other than that. You also have a long-term statistic that you probably don't want to hear about because then it becomes very, where we just go up and down and, you know, we go absolutely nowhere and we just trade back and forth for the longest period of time. And that could be until the halving or even after. And a lot of people can get just bored of crypto and they'll say, oh, it's the end of the world. And as it just does nothing in this area, um, you know, that's a possibility. And uh, that's actually good. That's what you want. You want the market is best when nobody's looking at it or paying attention to it. And the reason for that is because uh, when it does move, 
and the holders are holding and there are no buyers or sellers and there's equilibrium at a certain spot and you've cycled through the longer term like I said to this line down here um, it has nothing has no contradiction when it starts going up it all the people that sold sold right so what do they have to do they have to now buy and then the people that you know uh, the only sellers you get are the ones that are uh, happy with the the prices they get to the upside but then you get the fear of missing out people and they uh, generally there's more of them available than the people to sell and um, so that'll be an interesting proposition to see how that works out in the future but right now we've got this scenario here we go up to here drop down to here or we just go up to the 9,000 range uh, as a possibility and fulfill this pattern right here which is sticking out and we've seen patterns like this before in the past that have occurred and uh, topping and, and uh, uh, you know uh, what, what's the word I'm looking at? I don't even care it's too early in the morning I don't care uh, but so this is these are the possibilities short term we don't really have anything to go off of uh, longer term it's definitely the, the buy 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 uh, type of psychology but that's it and again you know I'll complete the video that shows the rebalancing and the long-term aspects and I'm going to talk a little bit about psychology um, in the next one too because uh, psychology is very important most people want, have the innate ability to do the exact opposite of what the market's telling them and that's because their brains are wired incorrectly they're, they're seeing things based on how they feel and how they react to what the market has done instead of seeing the big picture of what is possible and what's likely to occur. That's why I always tell people, observe. Observation is the key. And then from there, you plan. And then execute. Those are the three primary methods of, of trading. And it doesn't matter what you use. Uh, the only thing you need is the truth. What the market truth is, is what it does, what it produces, and it doesn't matter what people think or whatever. If you ever notice certain traders and so forth, they're caught in a belief system. And trading is not about belief. It's about possibilities and statistics and what's there and, and what happens most often. And it, the market doesn't care if you're emotional or uh, what you feel or think or any of that. So, you know, that's my philosophy in the always will be because I, you can only trade what's there and what the market does most often and try to be right more than wrong <laughs> that's basically it but anyway I hope you enjoyed the video um, you have a pretty good perspective of where I'm at and what I'm looking at and I'll just keep bouncing along other than that have a great week and enjoy your weekend and I'll talk to you next time